What's up, y'all? My name is Devonte, and I sacrificed my time so you don't have to. So with this video right here, two things. I'm going to be a little bit more light when approaching this topic right here because it kind of seems like Jeff Hardy. I mean, I don't know what's going on in his personal life as far as his home or anything like that. But, you know, considering that, you know, the news for professional wrestling is usually on point when it comes to serious matters like this, I haven't seen anything telling me that Jeff Hardy is, you know, going through any substance abuse or, you know, putting lives at risk because of his reckless behavior. So I would definitely say it's been about almost two years now since the last incident. It appears that he's progressing. So I'll approach this a little bit more light, just given the circumstances, because it's like, I don't want to judge the guy based off of his past, even though it's numerous instances, I don't want to judge him today based off of the things that he's done in the sense that like, I don't want to like constantly like shit on him, like as being a bad person when he's in the attempt of trying to grow, I will definitely take what he did in the past and use that as a way to suggest otherwise, if there's a decision that's going to be made. But in regards of judging his character, I'm not going to do that. That's not fair. Um, and another thing also, uh, before I talk about this, if you're new to the channel, um, Jeff Hardy is one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. Uh, Jeff Hardy, Matt Hardy, the Hardy Boys. I grew up on them. Uh, arguably, Matt, Jeff, and Lita. Matt, first off, the Hardy Boys are my favorite tag team of all time. That's period, point blank. And Matt, Lita, and Jeff are probably my favorite act of all time. And I guess technically that would make them a stable or a faction because it's more than three people or trios, however you like to refer to them. That, if you want to say trios, that's my favorite trios of all time, if you want to say it like that. I don't know. But just want to preface that with just saying that i'm a big jeff hardy mark and i'm not going to judge him too harshly because he is progressing sorry i took like too long to explain that but i feel like i have to talk about that before i actually talk about this article and progressing going forward so i want to read this article for you guys real quick it's in the uh, description box down below and then i'll give my opinion on it afterwards although you can kind of see the consensus as far as where i'm going to go talking about this topic it says jeff hardy loses yet again disrespects top aew star Jeff Hardy has just lost the match yet again on AEW Rampage tonight. I guess they're talking about on Friday. And it seems that his frustrations must be boiling over as he refused to show sportsmanship at the end of the bout. Jeff faced Darby Allen, who coincidentally was also the last man he had beaten in a singles competition. The two stars last faced each other on the May 11, 2022 episode of Dynamite, which implies that the charismatic Enigma has not won a singles match in almost two years. It was a high action contest as the two competitors had similar styles and were not afraid to attempt pulling off high risk maneuvers. The match had a dose of top rope moves, table dives, and incredible maneuvers. However, Allen was able to get Hardy with a roll up cover to steal the win. <clears throat> After the match, the former, eight, the, the former AEW TNT champion reached out to fist bump Hardy, but Jeff Hardy rejected this and simply rolled out of the ring. It was clear that he was quite frustrated with the loss. Lately, Jeff Hardy has been expressing his displeasure with how he and his brother Matt Hardy have been booked within the Jacksonville-based promotion. This has occurred on multiple occasions, and it remains to be seen what the future has in store for the Hardys. So first off, in a kayfabe sense, if this is their way of actually trying to give Jeff Hardy a little bit of a pivot of a character alteration, because it's not as if we've seen Jeff Hardy. It's not as if we haven't seen Jeff Hardy turn hill in the past. That was essentially his TNA run back in 2010, early 2011. And to be quite frank, this is just me. It just doesn't fit Hardy. Hardy being a hill, it just doesn't work out. That's just me personally. I, maybe AEW could do something different if that's the character approach they want to take. But guys like Jeff Hardy, guys like Ricky Steamboat, guys like Rey Mysterio it's just I can't really envision them being a hill it just doesn't doesn't even it doesn't work out I, I, I don't know I just can't I just can't picture it they'd have to do a complete 
180. Because someone like a Sting, for an example, during a surfer gimmick, I don't think anyone can actually pitch a Sting as a heel. You know what I mean? Until he did that complete 180. And technically, he became a tweener, at least for the majority of 96 and 97 before it became established that he was, you know, against the NWO. Technically, Sting worked as a tweener before he, you know, went full on Hill in 1999. But my point being is, from a character's perspective, if this is the path they want to go with Jeff Hardy as far as maybe a little bit of a Hill turn, I'm okay with that. But take into context this. This is a little bit of a blurring the lines because Jeff Hardy has been, I'm not saying he went on a rant, but he's damn sure been like on a, um, on a little bit of a kayfabe tirade, if you will, these past couple of weeks, air, like every time something happens on Rampage or something happens on Dynamite, in particular Dynamite or Collision, he'll like, you know, <clears throat> talk within character, but you can clearly tell he's frustrated where like he'll drop in the windows and be like, oh, you know, they're not using the Hardys again, but he's doing it in like his brother Nero character type of thing. He's like, oh, you know, we're living in this magical void that like kind of separates us from the AEW shows. Like, he'll, I mean, I'm not speaking verbatim here, but that's essentially the kind of uh, rants that he will go on on social media. He's been doing it for the past few weeks now. So I get that they're trying to blur the lines with the character and everything like that. But what I do want to talk about is that blurring of the lines. What I do want to talk about is what they're trying to siphon off of in order to attempt to blur the lines. And that's Jeff Hardy's um, actual frustrations, most likely with the com with the, with the um, <clears throat> company at the moment. And uh, fans, I'm seeing a lot of fans on social media. Some in my comment session, when I reflect off it, you know, once a while, when I talk about it, um, whenever Jeff actually shows up on Dynamite or is um, actually on the card for Dynamite, and they get upset and they say things like, oh, you know, like they're embarrassing Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy's one of the best wrestlers of all time. He's a legend. Why are they doing this to him? And all things are true. Jeff Hardy is absolutely a legend. Jeff Hardy is one of the greatest wrestlers in the history of the business. For sure, one of the most popular. And he's one half of one of the greatest tag teams of all time. These things cannot be disputed. You can say that you like more teams than the Hardy Boys, but objectively, they are one of the greatest tag teams of all time. Objectively, if you were to have a top 100 greatest wrestlers of all time list, it'd be kind of hard pressed for me not to take it seriously if you didn't have Jeff Hardy on the list. You know what I'm trying to say? Or I guess it'd be hard pressed for me to take it seriously if Jeff Hardy wasn't on the list. I, I, I just don't know how I would actually look at that. And one may argue that he's probably one of the biggest stars of his generation. That 2008 to like 2010 period, there were no bigger stars than Jeff Hardy at that time. He was for sure always in someone's top three. But you have to be realistic about these things. Like I said, I'm not going to be too harsh on him because it looks like he is progressing. But even though he's progressing, Jeff Hardy has relapsed multiple times. Me personally, being a big Jeff Hardy mark, I would absolutely have no problem with the stature of Jeff Hardy, with his accolades, with his resume. I'd have no problem with someone like a Jeff Hardy being the face of AEW. I don't give a fuck if he is going on in his 50s. He's Jeff fucking Hardy. If he wants to be the face of AEW, he can absolutely be the face of AEW. And honestly, he bring in a lot of casual fans and a bunch of nostalgic fans. That fan base for Jeff Hardy is very far reaching. I don't think anyone ever talks about that. With Jeff Hardy, it's very, very extensive. I don't think any wrestler outside of some like, you know, The Undertaker or Shawn Michaels, for an example... Jeff Hardy, he impacts generation after generation. You got to think about it. Jeff Hardy's impact on little kids like me back in 1999 resonates just as much as his singles run that extends into the 2010s. You know what I mean? Jeff Hardy has a fan base that extends from, I will argue, like 1999 all the way up to like, what, maybe 2014 if you take in the context of TNA run. Like, he has a 15-year gap right there with wrestling fans. Like, if you watch professional wrestling when you were 5 and say, 1999, and say you watch professional wrestling when you were 5 and, I don't know, 20, 2009, for an example, right? He has a fan base that could probably be argued that goes from, say, like, what, right about now, like, 14 or 15 years old to people who are, like, around 35 years old. Yeah, it's that deep when talking about a Jeff Hardy. He has a generation unlocked. 
But that still doesn't take away from the fact that he cannot be trusted in his position. I'm happy that he it looks like he's progressing and he's getting healthier. And, you know, one may even argue there's a reason why Tony Khan is doing this. You know, I shit on Tony Khan a lot and I shit on AEW a lot, but this I won't shit on them for. I absolutely understand why they won't put Jeff Hardy in the position to be a guy to carry the company, to be a champion at all for that matter. Because what if he does something a lot more reckless the next time around and he happens to be representing AEW as a champion at the time like take away the fact that oh he can't make it to the show or he can't defend the title because he's done something really really stupid at the time he's now wearing actively wearing aew hard gear it's not he's if he were to get arrested you know what they're gonna say it's not just gonna be aew superstar jeff hardy it's going to be aew champion aew superstar jeff hardy how do you think that's going to resonate with the, um, with the, um, not, 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 ignore the whole, like, oh, you know, bad publicity type of stuff. They got a TV deal coming up later on this year. How do you think that's going to make T, uh, T, um, AEW look like it uh, in, in front of the TNT executives that they're champions, um, you know, the people who they're, who they're, um, getting their money from or paying their money to, they're champions. They're getting in trouble and getting in trouble with the law. And now that's being what's representing the company that they're paying money for. Like that's, that's a horrible, horrible look. You know what I mean? You, you, know, you know, I would like for Jeff Hardy, I wish there was a way and there's no clear cut conclusive way of proving this. Unfortunately, I wish that there was a way for Jeff Hardy that we could look at him and say to ourselves like, okay, he's officially clean. He ain't never going to relapse ever again, but that's just not the case. <clears throat> and if history has proven anything, Jeff Hardy has relapsed a lot, a lot, like multiple, multiple times. And that's just like the drug related stuff. That's just the alcohol abuse stuff. Like put that to the side for a second. Now we got to talk about Jeff Hardy as far as being injury prone. Now we got to talk about Jeff Hardy as far as his health and like body wise at risk. It's pretty rare nowadays to watch a Jeff Hardy match, and Matt Hardy for that matter also, but it's nice if Matt Hardy's taking a bunch of risk like a Jeff Hardy. It's very rare to watch a Jeff Hardy match and not catch at least one botch. You know what I mean? The fact that this man is still doing a whisper in the wind with his body at his age is downright scary in some instances because he is narrowly escape breaking his shoulder breaking his neck like harming his opponents to a certain degree when he does a swan time bomb nowadays i think he only does it knowing that maybe he agrees with the rest of back in the days when jeff Hardy used to do the swan time bomb he would do it and like you know the illusion is that his body is catching your body but you can clearly tell it's mostly his upper back maybe even just his head in some instances that's landing on his opponent right nowadays Jeff has to brace for his fall and he's landing directly on his opponents. And I can only assume he talks to the wrestlers before the match and he asks them permission. Like, hey, when I do the swan time, can you brace my fall? Because my body can't take that kind of punishment anymore. So why even put yourself like look at it from Tony Khan's perspective. And again, I don't agree with Tony Khan on a bunch of things, but like 95% of things I don't agree with him on this decision. I absolutely agree with him on take away all the substance abuse problems for a second. Why would you torture a man like that? That's, that's essentially what's going on with Jeff Hardy. Every time he gets in the ring nowadays, he's, he's torturing himself. Do you know how many problems? I don't think there's not one body part on Jeff Hardy that hasn't been messed up yet. I mean, knock on wood, outside of maybe his neck. And I'm not even too sure about that. I'm not sure maybe he got a stinger once in a while. Like, no, bro. No. I understand that Jeff wants to do this. I understand that it's in his blood. I understand that he probably misses being on top. But when you take into context all the responsibility that is going to be put on you, that, to be quite frank, you're you're not deserving of at this moment with all due respect even though once again we can clearly see at least from an outside perspective looking in and i don't know and i can't take into context what's going on in his personal life but from what it looks like it looks like he's absolutely progressing no one can take that chance on a jeff hardy especially when you ruin it a bunch of times that's from a real that's from a rehabilitation standpoint as far as substance abuse but take it into context also the wrestling acumen standpoint nah bro and it's not like Jeff has ever been a Riz guy when it comes to the microphone work. So it's like, I mean, you're not really that good on the mic. Matt's always been the guy to carry you on the microphone when it came to the Hardy Boys, which Matt was never that good also until he got to his V1 days. But you're not good on the microphone all too well. 
You can't really do what you did to get you over to begin with because your body simply can't take it. And not to mention also, look at this again. He does all the uh, all the reckless spots that he's known for. Puts himself into a position where now he has to take some type of painkillers. And now you're going right back to the same spot that you were in previously that you were doing so well in as far as progressing, at least from what it looks like so far. There's just no winning in the situation. And I wish some of the Jeff Hardy marks out there. And mind you, I'm with you guys. I'm a Jeff Hardy mark also. But there are just some things that are just broken and they just cannot be fixed. That's it. Honestly, that's it. If you want my honest opinion, like Jeff needs to leave AEW along with Matt Hardy, in my opinion. Both of them need to leave AEW. They need to come back to WWE and they need to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. They need to be inducted into the Hall of Fame as the Hardy Boys, and then eventually Jeff can go in as a solo act. That's what needs to be done. And then they need to be ambassadors for the company. That's what needs to be done. Those guys, especially Matt Hardy, has a they, they have an insane amount of creativity. Not from the standpoint of the gimmick stuff, but look at the TLC matches. Look at the ladder matches. All that stuff for the majority of the time. From my understanding, listen to how everybody talks. 90% of that stuff came from the mind of Matt Hardy. All those TLC spots that we've seen, all the ladder spots, all the steel cage spots, from my understanding, a majority of it, the, the majority of the creativity all came from Matt Hardy. So it's not as if I can't picture Matt being backstage, especially with his wisdom and how old he's getting and stuff like that. He probably has a lot of things in his mind as far as what can get a match over and what cannot get a match over. I can absolutely see him, Matt Hardy being a producer. I can absolutely see him, Jeff being a producer. Hell, if they were wise and given how Triple H is when it comes to how he looks at certain things, I'd even send Matt and Jeff over down to, to uh, what's the name of that show called again? Um... Help me out here. Uh, NXT. And maybe they should be the ones to watch over and help build up the tag team division. Kind of like what the Young Bucks are doing right now. But, you know, actually being good at it. Because, you know, you actually have a Hall of Fame tag team that's actually doing it. That's what they should be doing at the moment. Not wrestling. You guys. And again, there's no disrespect. And there's no reason that is. I don't see why it's bad to say you look at Matt and you look at Jeff and you say to yourself, like, nah, bro, it's okay to hang it up, man. You know, you proved your point. You, is it the money? I don't think it's really the money all too much. Those guys are rich as fuck. And not to mention, knowing the kind of money they probably take as, as a legendary deal or being ambassadors, they probably wouldn't make as much money as, you know, their talent contracts. But I'm pretty sure they'd be, they'd be eating pretty well. And I'm pretty sure without nothing, like, the Hardy Boys, their merchandise is always going to be selling like motherfucking hotcakes, no matter what happens. Like, they will always sell out because it's the fucking Hardy Boys at the end of the day, especially Jeff. They'll be fine, but this right here, you guys got to give it a rest with the whole, oh, AEW's burying Jeff Hardy. Nah, man, Jeff Hardy buried Jeff Hardy. I'm sorry, bro, and I love Jeff, but no, Jeff buried Jeff. And not to mention nowadays also, especially with Matt and what's going on because his bitch of a wife, Rebby Hardy, is just, she's, it looks like she's about to go down the path of ruining his life. So you got that also. It's just not a good time to be a Hardy boy right now. It sucks. It really does suck. But it's 2024, man. It's not 2001 anymore. And them boys, man, you can't blame Tony for not booking you, bro. It's it's not his fault. Age, abuse, all those things come with the territory when it comes to him talking about a Jeff or even a Matt at this point. You can't get mad at Tony. Again, there's a bunch of things to talk about when it comes to Tony Khan. This right here, this ain't one of them. I'm sorry. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Do you agree with me? Do you understand my perspective when talking about a Jeff Hardy? Do you understand that it's not as if I'm looking at Jeff and I'm saying to myself, like, nah, man, you shouldn't be booked because yada, 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 yada. And all honesty, I don't think I haven't expressed that in this video. It's more so like 100% like concern. It's a straight up concern. And notice, I'm not trashing the guy. I'm not calling him a loser or any of these things like I did in the, uh, in the last couple of videos in the past because that was in the moment. Right here, it looks like he's actually, you know, like, hey, I'm trying and I can appreciate that. But you trying has nothing to do with you in the past failing. And I don't think anyone would be doing their proper due diligence if they let you go in the ring or if they gave you a title or if they gave you a push. I'm sorry, guys. With all due respect, and this is coming from a diehard Hardy Boys, Mark. The Hardy Boys are dead, man. I mean, as far as active wrestlers are considered, they're dead. It sucks, I know. But just do what I do. 
and just go on the WWE Network and enjoy it from that perspective right there. As always, my name is Devontae, and I'll be catching you guys later. Deuces, P. Ice.